Hello, this video is all about the centre of gravity of objects. Now the centre of gravity is quite important in the area of stability and balance and here you can see a picture of a lorry where the centre of gravity is causing a little bit of a problem. So let's start with some definitions. I'm going to define mass, weight and then the centre of gravity itself. Okay, so mass has a slightly unusual um, definition. It's defined in terms of the inertia of the object. Um, now, inertia is a property of an object with mass, and if an object has inertia, then the best way to phrase it, I think, is that it, it's reluctant to change its velocity or its motion. So, an object with more inertia will be harder to accelerate. It will take more force to accelerate it at the same rate as an object with less inertia. So mass is defined in, in that way um, as the amount that an object resists changes to its motion. Okay, the next one is weight. Weight is much more straightforward. So if an object with mass is placed in a gravitational field, then it will, will result in a force. So weight is a force, and the force is a result of the gravitational pull on that mass. So the mass will be subject to uh, an attractive force, gravitational force, when the two objects are attracted together. And we call that force weight. And then we come to the center of gravity definition. So the center of gravity of an object is the point at which all the weight of the object can be considered to act. Okay, so it's a particular point, And it's actually the point at which we draw the force arrow for weight. Okay, so it's that particular point there. So let's try and unpack that definition a bit. So here is a meter stick or a meter ruler, and it's made up of particles, uh, just like most other things in the universe. And all of those particles, and we're talking about the fundamental particles, so electrons, protons and neutrons, which are made of quarks, all of those fundamental particles have a mass, albeit a very tiny one. And the gravitational field that the particles find themselves in um, will cause a pulling an attractive force towards the other object which has the gravitational field and vice versa but that's beyond the scope of this video um, and so there you can draw a weight arrow like this a vector for all of the particles within that meter ruler now that's quite problematic because there are uncountable billions of them so what we do is we kind of take an aggregate or an average of all those weights and we draw it as a single arrow um, which acts from effectively the point uh, which is the average point along that um, that object bearing in mind the uh, mass distribution with, within the object. Sorry I haven't drawn that very well but obviously that should be a, a vertical line and that's what we call the weight. So the weight arrow or the weight is, is uh, the point at which all the weight of the object can be considered, considered to act so we just draw a single arrow. Okay, so how are um, weight, mass and gravity related? Well, I'm sure you've seen this equation before, but let's just uh, whiz through some of this stuff here. So if an object has more mass, it has more weight. Okay, nice and simple. So weight is proportional to mass. If you double the mass, you're going to double the weight. And that's because the gravitational field strength at any point is constant. Okay. Um, so gravitational field strength measured in newtons per kilogram, or sometimes you'll see it measured in meters per second squared because it's equivalent to an acceleration. Uh, multiplied by the mass of the object gives you the weight, which we shorten to this equation here, W equals mg. Okay, and on Earth, obviously, g uh, is equal to 9.81 meters per second, or 9.81 newtons per kilogram, which is the same thing. Okay, so... Center of gravity is important because of the stability aspect of, of the weight and the position of the weight within the object. So here we have a Bunsen burner. Now a Bunsen burner is an extremely stable object um, and it's designed that way because when you knock a Bunsen burner you don't want it to fall over, you want it to come back upright. So you can actually tilt a Bunsen burner by quite a large angle before it falls over and that's because the um, the center of gravity of the Bunsen burner is extremely low, maybe about here. So at this angle, the weight of the Bunsen burner will act down in that direction. And because it's to the right of the balance point, there'll be a moment in this direction, a turning effect from the weight, which will cause it to tip over. 
but you can see at what angle this weight force falls outside the uh, the base or the pivot point uh, and so that makes the Bunsen very stable. In contrast here is um, a full glass of uh, champagne. Now we only need to tilt that a little way before the the weight the center of gravity is probably about here in a wine glass so the weight acts downwards from that point there and you can see that it's already outside the area of the base. So the wine glass will fall over uh, because it's subject to uh, a turning effect in this direction at this quite small angle compared to a Bunsen burner which won't topple until it gets to about this sort of angle. Okay, so effectively the lower the centre of gravity is, the more stable the object is and it, because it has to go to a larger angle before the centre of gravity goes outside the base. Okay, so what about suspension? Um, here we have two kind of opposing photographs. We have an object in suspension and an object that's balanced on a point. So let's take them in reverse order. Um, here we have uh, a ballet dancer who is on point. I think that point maybe should have an E on it in this particular case. Um, balancing on point rather than on a point. And we can say that when an object is balanced, the centre of gravity will be on a line vertically above the balance point. So this, the centre of gravity of, of uh, the ballet dancer must be somewhere along this line here because in order to cancel the clockwise and the anti-clockwise moments from different parts of her body, um, the centre of gravity must be exactly above the balance point. And similarly, although in contrast, the centre of gravity of a suspended object must be below the point of suspension, vertically below. So if this is the point of suspension, then the centre of gravity whoops, should be somewhere on a line uh, directly below, as long as the object is, uh, has come to rest and is freely suspended below the balance point, below the suspension point. Okay, so the centre of gravity of the cat must be somewhere along this slightly wobbly line, which should be vertical. Okay, so how do you find the centre of gravity? It's all very well saying it's somewhere along this, the, these lines, but we actually want to find the position, the point uh, of the centre of gravity. So the way to do that is, and here's, here's a, a randomly shape ob shaped object, two-dimensional object, uh, and the way to find the centre of gravity of this object is to suspend it. So what you would do is you would um, take your object and you would make a hole in it perhaps so we could make a hole here and we could suspend the object from uh, from that point and then we would use a plumb line so we would have a vertical line that goes through the object with a weight on the end um, maybe a string or a piece of a cotton thread uh, with with the plumb line on it and we would actually draw a line let's do it in a different color we would draw a line along the line that goes vertically down from the point of suspension. Okay, uh, so we would have a line on the object. Let's just group those together so we can uh, do the next bit because what we're going to do now is we're going to turn it round. So you would turn the object round and suspend it from a different point uh, and then you would make another hole and you would then suspend it from there and put your plumb line in again uh, and get another vertical line through uh, along the object. Draw along that line like that and there will be a point uh, at which the lines intersect. So this point here is the intersection point and that's where the center of gravity of the object would be. Okay, so suspend it from one point, draw a vertical line downwards, suspend it from the other point, draw a vertical line downwards. And the point of intersection is the centre of gravity, and that's how you find it. Okay, thanks very much.